All right, so my poor little man Connor has been sick the last couple days, but I wanted to show you guys something that I think is very interesting. You can order this off of Amazon. It's 25 test. I think it was about $35, which is pretty cheap. It's a little over a dollar per test, but you can do your own test for strep A at home, and it's pretty simple. I'm going to show you guys how to do it. I've already done this on him a couple days ago, but it is possible for someone to, in the early stages for any test, for it to be negative because it just hasn't had a chance to convert, hasn't become positive yet, and that's called a false negative. And so I'm just going to test him again. Now that he's been sick for a couple of days, had a fever for a couple of days, and again uh, run this test, and I'm going to show you guys how to do it because it's pretty easy. Isn't it, Connor? Mm -hmm. You ready to show him how to do a strep test? Poor baby. So, <coughs> what we have here, <coughs> poor baby. What we have here is reagent A and reagent B. Okay. So you've got these little containers. And what you do is you get four drops of each, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Four full drops, so let's put it right in here. One, this is A, make sure I got it. Yeah, this is A. One, two, three, four. Good. That was kind of a small drop that last one. I'm gonna put a little bit more as kind of a half drop, so we'll put another little half drop in there. Good. Shouldn't mess things up too bad. And then we've got reagent B. One, two, three, four. Four. Those are nice big drops, so then I'll compensate for that little half drop. Okay. So then you swirl this around. Let me just read it to you, so make sure I got it. I've only done it once before. Hold the Rachel bottle upright, four full <coughs> drops of A and then B, and then shake the tube gently. Just shake the tube gently. All right. And then what we're going to do is swab his throat. This is the important part. You got to get back to the tonsils. That's kind of, that may be kind of hard. You got to have him go, ah, stick his tongue out, and right there behind his tongue on the left and right are his tonsils. You can look Google that on YouTube to figure out what tonsils look like, but it's not that hard. And you place the, once you swab it, you rotate it 10 times, leave it in the tube for one minute, and then press the swab against the side to squeeze the liquid out of it to leave the liquid in there for the reagent. Okay, so here we go. With your other hand, Nanny, I'm going to have you hold that tube. Okay, so you swab. This is just your cotton. This comes in the kit. This is just your standard cotton swab. Okay, you ready, buddy? And here's the part. This is probably the hardest part for, for my little man, and that is... Actually, it's not so bad. It's not so bad? Okay. So, it's going to have you, and I'm going to look at my watch here in a second. Say a real big look up. Say, ah. Stick your tongue out, ah. Okay. Okay. And we're going to get a good one to get. I swabbed you good. Sorry there, buddy. Okay, so now, I'm going to stick this in the tube. And ten times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and we're about ten seconds before <coughs> the top, and so we'll let this sit for one minute like it says to. I've set a timer. I've, I'm, I've got my watch going here, babe, but yeah, if you're not, if you want to be really s strict about the time, probably not that important, but um, now, let's go ahead and read this while we got this extra 45 Why seconds. Why do we have these things? <coughs> Those are controls. That's, a, that's to make sure your test is working right. It's a positive and negative control. Maybe we can mess with that in a second. So, um, well then we're going to immerse this test strip in the tube, and we're not going to allow the level to go, we're not going to let the fluid go above the black marker. So on the little strips is a black marker. Just don't dunk it any deeper than that black line. Okay, this is our test strip. So the first one's our cotton swab. This is our test strip. And we're right at about that one minute mark. Okay, so now I want to have all the fluid in the tube. So what it meant was just squeeze as you're pulling it out, because if you take the cotton swab out with all the fluid on it, you don't have as much stuff to test. Just kind of squeeze the cotton swab to get the juice out of it. I'll just stick that back in here in case it's, it's almost dump that. Make sure you don't dump that. Okay, and then we're going to take this test strip. So again, this is for strep. This isn't going to give you any results for influenza. I'm not a big believer that you can do much about influenza personally. Okay, 
So there's the black line. There's this little black line. And what they're saying is don't dunk the black line. You're only going to put this in for five seconds. This is a little sponge. It's going to suck up. It's going to wick up the fluid. And so you only have to have it in there for five seconds. So we're going to stick in there. One, two, two three, three, four, four five. five. Pull it out. And now we want to set this down. we we'll set this in here. Look, we've got this little thing. And you can use these little holes in here too for your, to put your, I could have done that instead of having her hold it. And now we're going to look at the clock again because we're going to read this in 10 minutes, okay? So here, I'll, I'll put on a timer here. I'll put on a timer. We'll come back in 10 minutes and see what this thing says. Um, and, where, and what you're looking for, let's get my timer going here, because if you wait for 20 minutes, it invalidates the test. Probably that means if it's negative, you can't rely on it. I don't think that means it turns positive. It just means that if it is negative, at 20 minutes, it's no longer, you can't, you can't interpret it at 20 minutes. So we're going to, you need to interpret it at around 10 minutes. And it, it actually, the last one I did, changed long before that. But what we're looking for is these two black lines, the two little pink lines above the black line. There's the black line, it'll be way up here. And if the control only is pink, and then the second line is not there, that's negative. And you can see that right here, negative. But if they're both positive, you got two hash marks, then you have a positive strep test. So we'll come back and look at that in a second. Huh? All right, so here we go. So this was a negative test. I have, it, and, and notice I put, I didn't put the uh, strep on a sponge. You don't want anything that's going to wick away that fluid. That little test strip is absorbent like a sponge, like cotton. And if you put it on something else that's absorbent, it could pull away the sample. But here, again, we see that you'd want to see two lines if it were positive. Now, what I might do here, just for fun, just to try it once, is I have this, and I read the insert while I was waiting, there's a positive control. So instead of swabbing his throat, I put three drops of this into the bottle and, uh, and that, that way I can test to make sure that, I, that the operator, they recommend that when you open a new kit that you run a positive, that you run a control just to make sure the kit is working properly. And then anytime you change operators, let's say you have someone new to do the test who's never done it before, then you would, and then you can also do a neg negative control and you should see that when you use these drops, that it looks like the person's strep negative. So you could do either one of these things. I'm probably gonna run a positive control uh, just for, uh, out of interest. Anyway. But this is his, and it is negative. One line, not two. Negativo, no strep. So we'll see what happens when I take him to the doctor today, and uh, I'm going to have them run the same strep test, so I can basically have a, a confirmation that this kit works properly. Hope you found this interesting. All right, so I'm doing a quality control. I just added four drops of both A and B, and now I'm not going to use a swab because this is a control. And I'm going to add three drops of this uh, reagent. I'll show you how that works. All right, so I'm going to add, I added three drops of reagent. I mix it up, and I'm going to let this thing wick up. I learned in the last one, was five seconds wasn't quite enough. One, two, three, four, five. So, and I see it wicking up. You can see it wicking up there. It's taken, it takes a little bit of time. So I don't think five seconds is enough. I think as long as you get it, you got to get it to the top where the, the liquid has to get almost to the green part of the stick. So I don't think five seconds is enough. And it'll continue to wick once I pull it out. And that ought to get up there. But we're going to let it go all the way up. I don't know how that could negatively affect it. It says pull out after five seconds, but I don't think that's enough. Okay, so you can see that I'm getting my, um, one of my, that actually may be my um, positive strep right there. I'm not sure. But I'm making sure it gets all the way to the top. You saw on the last one, it has to get pretty close to the top. So this should appear as though the person has strep. Now again, we're going to let it go for 10 minutes. I'm about 53 before the hour, but you can see it's already starting to convert. You can see that even normally you have to give it 10 minutes to be sure, and I'll come back and take another shot of the video after 10 minutes. Again, this is not from Connor's throat. This is me running a quality assurance test to make sure that my kit is not, you know, got baked in the sun or something. The chemicals have been rendered ineffective. And again, you wait and interpret the results at 10 minutes, not at one minute, not at 20 minutes. And it says in there specifically, if you wait till 20 minutes, then the uh, test can be rendered, uh, well, uninterpretable basically. And you can see though that the, that positive is already starting to change color. Why do I care about strep? Why don't I care about a thousand other things that I could test for? Well, even when you take your patient, your uh, patient, your child to the pediatrician, they're generally only going to test for strep for sure, and then they might test for some other types of uh, viral 
upper respiratory path uh, pathogens such as influenza, A or B, or uh, RSV. So there's, but those are viral um, uh, issues. And unless you believe Tamiflu is a uh, effective treatment, which I do not, Tamiflu is expensive. It uh, has side effects. It's not good for your internal organs, specifically your liver. And unless you start the Tamiflu within 24 hours, I think they've now extended it to 72 hours, but they used to say 24, and I still believe that's it, it really isn't going to have much of an effect. And that's because your immune system's already started to take care of business by 24 hours, for one thing. And, and the Tamiflu, even when, if you give it to, if you were to give it to a person the second they became infected, in other words, well within that first 24 hours, it's only going to reduce their uh, severity of their illness and the length of their illness by a very small marginal amount, maybe a day. So, you know, I, I just don't think uh, it's worth it. So the point is, if you're testing for flu, so someone might say, well, hey, if you're testing for strep, shouldn't you also be testing for influenza? Should you be testing for something else? Well, the pediatrician's not going to do that. Now, if, my, if your child stays sick for a long time, then of course we're now going to start looking for other causes and running other more... Uh, uh, less common tests, but even your doctor's not going to run anything but a strep test unless there's some clinical reason, like if you're, you have a, uh, a barking cough or really, really high fevers or just you know, really sick. I mean, then you, your, your child might get hospitalized, okay? So I'm not talking about someone who's really super sick, but for the average upper respiratory infection, sore throat, fever, the thing we worry about is strep A. Why? Because it's a bacterial pathogen and it can get into your blood. It's called bacteremia and the bacteria can seed your heart valves and cause uh, vegetations on the heart valves. Not something you'd even really know about initially. You might not know until a decade later. And so it really is important to treat your child with antibiotics in the case of strep so that they don't end up having um, heart issues uh, later on down the road. So this, I believe, is a pretty important test. And again, like I said, this kit is $34 off of Amazon that anyone can order. And um, you know, I'm not going to necessarily call this the uh, uh, the final word. I'm going to take my child in today because he's pretty sick, and and I'm gonna and I want them to run another strep test in the office because I want to compare my results to their results and make sure that this kit really works for one thing. But now you can go in armed with a little bit of information, and when your kid's negative, you can and you're on the road or you don't have access to a doctor, you can be rest assured that your child doesn't have strep, which can be very serious. And if your child has a virus like influenza. Sure, it can, it can make your child really sick and the child might need to be hospitalized, but there's really no medication, there's really no action that can be taken when, the patient, when your child has an upper respiratory virus. And understand that of all URIs, what we call URIs, which are upper respiratory infection, the far majority, some studies 90%, are caused by viruses, not by bacteria. So this is your chance to prove that it's not, not strep which is a concerning uh, pathogen for 34 bucks. And you get 25 of these kits. I can, I can test my child 25 times. Now I just burned one to do a control, uh, but that's okay. Now I can see that the kit works. And this is what it would look like if your child actually had strep. The darker line near the green is the control. That's all, that should always turn positive. If that didn't turn positive, you didn't wick enough fluid up there. Your fluid didn't climb up the sponge high enough and you gotta dip it back into the, into the test tube. But that second lighter line that's lower down, that's closer to the black line, that is what it would look like if your if your if your patient or your child had. You could do this on an adult as well. If your child had uh, a positive test for strep A, and would definitely need to be put on some antibiotics such as Omnicef. You know, obviously in the old days we used a lot of uh, amoxicillin, and if you're not allergic, there's nothing wrong with amoxicillin uh, generally speaking. But now people like to use Omnicef. But anyway, I hope uh, you found this educational. We've almost done the full 10 minutes. I don't think it's. I don't, I'm not going to come back at this point. I think this is uh, shown positive. And again, gives you a little bit of uh, control and ability to uh, run some tests yourself on adults or, chil you know, or children, especially when you're away from home or uh, you just want the immediate result or the doctor can't get you in for uh, in a timely fashion. Hope you enjoyed this.